Good evening, everybody. This is Jeff J. Brown in beautiful Shenzhen, China, just south of the Tropic of Cancer, for another China Rising Radio Sign of Land podcast and article. Again, I will put the source article, uh, the, the hyperlink uh, for the article uh, on the YouTube uh, and SoundCloud um, recordings on those websites so that you can get to the source article, see all the hyperlinks and the um, uh, pictures I use. All right, tonight it is called, Do You See What I See? Depends on where you look. And there's a photo, well actually not a photo, a rendition of the Titanic. Pictured above is not the sinking of the Titanic. Look closely and you can see that the right bow side is the Imperial United States already starting to break apart and crash into the ocean. The left hand stern side is Uranglo land, which is following America's collapsing trajectory. Here we go. It's really funny how different the West looks from a, from a country like China than, than trying to see the same happenings behind the Great Western Firewall. In the West, the fog horn of relentless propaganda is pounding your brain day and night, but it can be overcome with discipline and motivation. First, like quitting a poisonous drug, you have to go cold turkey and boycott all mainstream media. Then thrive on a truth-rich diet of alternative sources of information. A good example of this is news about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, abbreviated STEM, S-T-E-M. Outside specialized websites and journals, China is mostly the invisible man. It is easy to see why. Whichever country holds the keys to the 21st century's technology of the future will be king of the mountain in the decades to come. The mainstream propaganda machine largely censors the fact that China has got Western empire reeling against the ropes already. China is pounding cutting-edge technology like artificial intelligence, abbreviated AI, down the throat of Western empire. The West's owners, like G Google CIA spymaster Eric Schmidt, are keenly aware of the problem. Ditto robots. China is bringing to fruition its ambitious goals to be the world's leader in robot technology. You can take it to the bank. China is also blowing the West away in quantum computing. It's not even close. Another huge sector, sector where Baba Beijing is going bonkers is using and interpreting big data. Many of China's companies, private and public, uh, and especially the government, can use big data information like no other country since only one other nation has a population similar to China's 1.37 billion, India. All of these avant-garde technologies are fueled by supercomputers and for years now, China has been the world leader using their own nationally manufactured petaflop microprocessors and chips. China now has the two fastest supercomputers in existence and over 200 of 500 of the fastest to crunch and put to good use all the aforementioned information, placing it well ahead of gasping America. While people in the know concede that Russia's military is superior to the West's, China's People, People's Liberation Army, the PLA, is too. The West and Israel equally fear Iran's martial might. All three countries are using state-owned, meaning socialist, enterprises to outperform the much-vaunted much American worldwide Wehrmacht, Israel included. Unlike the West, China does not fear 21st century technology and what it means for its economy and citizens, because it is communist socialist. All of this is being developed by and under the guidance of the Communist Party of China, the CPC, and not by Wall Street, 
military contractors, and oil bankers. Westerners should be worried because their capitalist owners will make sure that all the ensuing gains in productivity and thus profits will go to the wealthiest elites. That's how capitalism ultimately works. The masses can starve and cannibalize each other for all they care. Being communist socialist, Baba Beijing will make sure that the vast majority of the wealth generated by new age technology will be shared by the masses. For example, Chinese, the Chinese have the same problem as the world over, a gentrifying population. The people here welcome robots and AI, which can help the dwindling number of human workers in the future relative to its burgeoning elderly population. Baba, Be Baba Beijing could tax robots and computers by calculating their productivity value and passing these returns to the people in the form of increased housing subsidies, even better universal health care, lower cost public transportation, increasing minimum wages, and possibly a minimum social welfare benefit for all citizens. Almost any other country or society in human history would see all of this evidence staring them in the face, reflect, and adapt. The only exception is empires, and the West is one of those writ large on the canvas of the 24-hour news cycle. Western empire, like everyone studied over the millennia, is blinded by its hubris, arrogance, and denial. While China and North Korea are draining America's dwindling resources in Korea across the 38th parallel, see uh, the footnote below for my catalog of uh, career-related articles. Baba Beijing is frustrating Uncle Sam's overextended, overworked, and dysfunctional navy in the South China Sea where the boys in blue can't keep from crashing into things. Systemic corrupt, corruption and crony profiteering are hallmarks of empire. No one knows who is pocketing all those trillions with a T of photocopied greenbacks since America's open sewer Department of War has not been audited in 27 years. Fort Knox, the supposed repository of the taxpayer's gold reserves, has not been fully audited in decades. Based on historical precedents, it's probably empty or close to it. The hapless 99% will get stuck paying for it all and more via regressive taxes, hyperinflation of the currency, and as the Imperial Titanic finally flips nose down and dives, asset seizures will increase exponentially. They are already happening in the West with governments and police forces seizing billions of dollars of euros and do uh, dollars in euros with bail-ins and, quote, criminal forfeitures. Capitalists also feast like vultures on the victims of natural disasters, stripping their assets in the chaotic aftermath while there is intentionally little to no government help. It was a gangbang of the week after the 2004 tsunami in Indonesia, in New Orleans after 2005's Hurricane Katrina, and the same playbook is now being perpetrated on the powerless in Houston and Puerto Rico after the recent Hurricane Harvey. I can just hear the ghost of Western Roman Empire's last emperor, Romulus Augustulus, right about now. It's 475 A.D., one year before the collapse. There he is, bemoaning and rationalizing why his armies are losing against the supposed inferior barbarians, vandals, and Visigoths. He and Rome's opulent 1% Senate and the gilded aristocracy are trying to stave off the inevitable. They are fighting over dwindling resources, while supply lines falter to demoralized and desperate centurions who are taking it in the collective chin, scattered across distant front, front lines in faraway colonies. On the home front, the theft and importation of 250,000 foreign slaves every year from conquered lands 
who are worked to death by the, by the wealthy can't make up for increasing taxes and growing personal debt to the elite bankers, loans needed to maintain their unrealistic, luxurious standard of living. The empire's reserve currency is being more and more diluted with cheap lead as the coins get smaller, notched, and cut. Roman society is being rent asunder by identity politics, class divisions, and racism, all continuously churned by the elites to keep the citizens' eyes off their being slowly impoverished. Romulus's gang keeps the masses fearful and obedient by committing false flag terrorism at an increasing rate to victimize foreigners and infidels who were then persecuted and massacred. This bogus terror brainwashing makes the robbery of the public's assets plausible and necessary to maintain security. The endless stream of fake attacks also justifies an increasingly brutal and oppressive police state for the people's safety. And as time goes on, the brow-beaten sheeple are begging their owners for protection. On the periphery of empire, the barbarians, vandals, and Visigoths are fully aware of what is happening in the belly of the faltering, slowly dying Roman beast as information and news is brought back to their strongholds. Their leaders take full advantage of the situation by improving their technology development and adapting systems while continuously draining the empire's resources. 1,600 years later, on the periphery of Western Empire, Baba Beijing is fully aware of what is happening in the belt belly of the fal faltering, slowly dying Occidental beast as information and news are processed from afar. It is taking full advantage of the situation by improving and adapting the nation's technologies and systems while continuously draining the West's imperial resources. The rest is history, as they say. It is a game that China has been playing for 5,000 long years. And with six, six societal collapses of their own during this time span, Baba Beijing has thousands of pages of history books and court documents to ponder and then plan and prepare. To really comprehend all of this in exciting detail, read the China Trilogy. You are guaranteed to understand your world and where you are headed into the 21st century. Then there's a picture of a, a real um, Romulus, Augustulus <laughs> coin from the era. And the byline says, are Donald Trump, Theresa May, Emmanuel Macron, and Benjamin Netanyahu the collective Romulus, Augustulus of the 21st century? It's probably not our 476 AD just yet. But the process of imperial collapse is manifestly on its way. Just ask the Chinese. They've had six in their long, rich millennial history. To close out and reflect on this article and podcast, let's go to one of the West's most fabled colonial outposts, Australia. While there, we can dance across the electro electromagnetic spectrum to a great hunters and collectors rocker, Do You See What I See? It's a great song. To... Too bad the Hoonas, as their fans called them, did not gain well-deserved fame outside Down Under. They were terrific, and their entire discography deserves a listen. Your choice, official 1988 video or live. And then the footnote says, Below is my catalog of extensive audiovisual and written journalism on Korea. It gives the necessary Chinese and Korean perspective you will not find in mainstream propaganda. My reporting exposes the systematic censorship of the West's grotesque crimes against humanity, bioweapons, and genocide on the peninsula. Also, read Raman Mazahari's excellent analysis of the West's repeated betrayal of the Korean people, North and South, since the end of World War II. This is Jeff J. Brown, 
China Rising Radio Sinoland, signing out from Shenzhen. Have a wonderful evening. Good night.